Well, it looks like we might be in the next deep seek moment as Kimi K2 comes onto the scene. This model is crushing the competition when it comes to coding, tool use, and math. And the crazy thing, it's completely open source and cost 80% less compute than the top competitors. The model has a trillion parameters and they claim to have invented some crazy tech that makes this possible with the efficiency it has. For example, I asked Kimmy how many parameters Claude Sonnet 3.5 has and it's estimating around 200 billion. However, Kimmy K2 is supposedly 80% cheaper. Now I'm going to go into some demos and show you what it can do. But first I wanted to highlight this page on Open Router. It shows the absolute parabolic move that it's made over the last few days. Given that many coders are switching away from Anthropic models to Kimi K2. Now, as an automator and a marketer, there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. As inferred on this page here, you can connect N8N with Open Router and query Kimi K2 as of today for your AI responses. Not only that, I will be asking Kimi K2 to create some automations and see how well it does. A quick result of my first query, and I honestly have to say, this is a lot better than any model could do a couple months ago, and I have high expectations. But before we do that, let's run through some demos that they have already on their website. This is an example of a user that's asking Kimi K2 to give a report on a Coldplay tour, and then they go down over here, they give it their total budget, how they want to do their transportation, and all of that. And then we look at the result, and it's pretty crazy. It created this as the result and you can see it has the tour information where they're going from where they are Toronto Boston London Los Angeles it's figured out where the tickets are and for when it has a complete itinerary with the flights the weather for all the places there's fine dining recommendations accommodations weather all that for all the places how much it's going to cost roughly it even created this interactive route map right here and it's just pretty impressive in terms of the type of output that it gave for that. And then over here, it was asked to create a web version of a 3D Minecraft, and you could see a demo of what the terminal looks like, uh, but I'll hop into the result right here. As you can see, it's playable with jumping, moving around. You can see it generated the movements, a tiny bit choppy, but you can see it generated all different types of blocks and trees, spawns, and all of that. So it's just incredible what these models can do with just a simple prompt in terms of creating an entire game that ordinarily could have taken many hours to do something like this. So if you want to play around the, with the model, you can simply go to Kimi.com and it will have a very similar interface to OpenAI's ChatGPT. And you can ask it any questions. I have the completely free version. I just signed in with my Google account and I was able to give it some questions. The first question I asked it is to create a JSON file for an N8N automation that performs a simple business tasks. Now, I've tried this in the past with Claude Sonnet, and we even created the MCP video, which is down below, where Claude will automatically create these automations using MCP. The big difference between that and this is here, we have a lot less context. All I'm saying is N8N on the question. I'm not giving it any docs. I'm not giving it any any detailed instructions, all I gave it is this simple command right here. And I'll ask it again one more time so you can kind of see the speed of this. It's definitely a little bit slower than a lot of the competition, um, but nonetheless pretty impressive. So it's kind of thinking of how it's going to create the workflow here. And this time it's creating a different one, so we can test this one too. And then here it's writing the code. And then when I go into N8N and Im import it, this is the result that I get. So it created this first part, which is a webhook that looks good right here. And then a Google Sheets node that you can see. And obviously, because we don't have a Google Sheets ID, it can't do everything. I'm not really sure if the bottom part would work or not if connected. But my first impression is that this is really good in the sense that all the nodes are actual nodes that exist. Many times in the past without the context, I don't think I've ever gotten automations created that have all existing nodes for one, and then two, they're all connected properly. Oftentimes the connections would be completely done poorly by the AI. So then we have this Slack one right here, and you can see it says new lead, and then some information about the lead, um, like the first name, last name, all of that. So this looks pretty good, and what you would do for 
most normal automation. So everything looks good here. And then MailChimp, I never used this before. Um, obviously we don't have our credentials in, uh, but it is saying to pass the email to MailChimp. So that seems like what's the most logical structure of the automation. So I think overall this was pretty good. Okay, so the second thing I asked is a little bit more complex. This time I said create an N8N automation that starts with a form trigger where the user uploads an image and a prompt in their email. It's then connected to Fell AI's Flux Context model, renders a new photo, and then emails that using the Gmail node. So it came up with this uh, entire response. I took that as a JSON file, I uploaded it to N8N, and here's what I got. And what I have to say is this is a little bit less impressive. The first thing you'll see is technically it did get every node as an existing node and they're linked up correctly, but the form trigger, the form title doesn't have anything. The form name doesn't have anything. It's not collecting anything. So it's not really of any use. Here we have the HTTP node. You can see it's at least like named correctly and I'm pretty sure it has the right URL, but it's not sending anything to Flux Context, which is a really bad sign because that's kind of the whole point of this automation. So this definitely won't work here. And then this pulling to wait for it's ready. It is getting the response URL, which is something you would probably do, but you wouldn't set it up in this way. This wouldn't be an accurate um, way to set up this automation. You would want to do it through a loop or something like that. And then finally on the Gmail, it says your Flux Context image is ready. There's no to email because they didn't collect your email. Um, and then right here, this is um, somewhat organized in the way you'd want, but overall, as you can see, most of the work is not done and this wouldn't work. So my kind of review on this is it's okay. I even asked it for a modification to this to try to get it to fix it. And in fact, it even made it worse and it wouldn't open. So those results aren't too great to work with, but I really want to clarify it here that we're not giving it context and it's not going through the docs and learning how to do it. We're just simply saying N8N. So I think it's pretty impressive that it's doing what it's doing. Um, but I have to say, you will probably need to connect this into a bit more and I'll probably make a new video when people have spent more time. I'll definitely create another video if someone connects this to an MCP with N8N or people make plugins or context windows that allow it to understand N8N a little bit better. But for now, I would say it's not really there to be able to do this type of automation that we've been talking about. Now, just for fun, this um, duplicate of the query that I sent right here, asking it for another business task, uh, it came up with a new idea and I was just doing this really to demo the speed of it. Uh, but because I did it, I'm gonna actually take this JSON and see if this automation is any good. Okay, and we imported the file here. And the first thing you'll notice with this one is we have our first node that doesn't exist. Uh, this is a completely broken node. And the rest are more or less um, combined properly. You can see is the revenue above a thousand. You know, this was programmed correctly to go through. And then there's this calculate revenue here, which is kind of assuming a lot of stuff that is gonna be getting in uh, right here, and I don't really know how to judge it. It has this uh, HTTP request uh, right here where it's a demo and it's going to be getting the data. Now, I don't really fault it too much given that I gave it a very vague question and it doesn't know a lot about N8N. So I can see some good stuff here, but overall, this is not something <laughs> that, you know, it's pretty much you're going to have to start from scratch uh, if, even if you're trying to do something like this with the revenue indicator as it showed. Now, obviously creating N8N automations with it is just one out of a million things you can do. Feel free to explore at Kimmy.com. Of course, I'm gonna be doing more updates as more stuff comes out. Please make sure to follow my ex at x.com slash mentor. If you wanna stay up to date with all the latest AI tech, subscribe to my email newsletter at adrian.co slash subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later.